Hi everybody, tonight we're going to talk about the definition and measurement of money, which is Krugman Module 23. We're going to talk first about the meaning of money, what is it, then we're going to talk about the different roles that money plays, so as a medium of exchange, store of value, and unit of account. Third, we will talk about types of money, what are the different types of money that are out there, and then last we'll talk about measuring the money supply. Let's start by talking about what money is. The definition of money is literally essentially anything that is easily exchangeable for goods and services. Now keep in mind money is not barter. So before there was paper money, before gold or silver were used as means of exchange, barter was the prevailing way to exchange goods and services. So in, a, in exchange for giving you a ride from uh, your home to your market, you might give me a loaf of bread. Um, barter is still used some places. Barter is still used when people don't have cash, but it is really uh, the, the far, far, far minimum of trade that happens. Most all of trade now is, is using money. Money plays three roles. First, it's in a medium of exchange. So it gives you a way to exchange your services for good uh, for your services for money for something that you can then turn around and use to do something else so here's a three-step example your employer exchanges dollars for an hour of your labor you then exchange those dollars for a grocer's pound of apples the grocer then takes that money and uses it for an orchard's apple crop and so on and so on so that's what medium of exchange means it's the, it's the way that we trade goods and services using a piece of paper to represent the value of that good or service. Second is store of value. I can literally put my dollars under my mattress or in a checking account if I want to and hold on to the value of that, uh, that wealth that I have. Now, as long as prices aren't rapidly increasing, you can do this. If prices are going up, then inflation is going to take hold. And as we've talked, over time, inflation decreases or erodes the value of the money that you have. But we're talking about a week or a month later, that money will hold its value. Third, as a unit of account, it just gives us a way to evaluate or value things so that I can compare the value of one good to another. I can compare the value of a Chipotle burrito at five to seven dollars to the value of uh, I may want to buy a new hat and that hat may be ten dollars. So it's a way for me to evaluate or measure relative worth of goods and services. There are three types of money that we need to understand. The first is what's called commodity money. Commodity money is something that's used as money, normally gold or silver, as I show here, that has intrinsic value, though, in other uses. So I can melt this gold down, I can melt the silver down to make jewelry if I want to, or I can use it to trade. Commodity-backed money is paper money whose value was guaranteed by the ability to turn this in and trade it for what are called valuable goods or services. Generally, it was silver or gold. And I've circled here where it says five silver dollars. This is what's called a 1923 Lincoln five dollar, uh, five silver dollar note. I put here silver to, to distinguish it from, put the circle here to distinguish it from today's five dollar bill. This note you could literally take into a bank and hand it to them and they would give you five dollars worth of silver. Fiat money which is what we trade today, is money whose value derives from its official status. So there is no backing for this particular piece of paper other than the government's guarantee that this is worth five U.S. dollars. Now, it's accepted for nearly everything. So it plays essentially the same role that this money did except that I can't walk into the bank. If I walked into the bank and they tried to, and I tried to get gold with it, they'd laugh at me. I'd have to go to a gold dealer. Okay, so those are the three types of money. Commodity money, commodity backed money, and fiat money. Now, M1 and M2, so measuring the money supply. How do we do that? We use two terms. The first is M1 and the second is M2. M1 
of which there's about $1.6 trillion out there, consists of cash, checking deposits, and traveler's checks. So the bills or the coins that you have in your pocket, checking deposits, whatever you have in your checking account, and traveler's checks. Traveler's checks are nothing more than pieces of paper that have been exchanged for fiat money that people use when they travel used to. They really aren't used that much anymore. These traveler's checks were big before credit cards came into, came into being. M2 then consists of M1, so these three items, plus savings accounts, short-term certificates of deposit, and money market accounts. These three savings accounts, short-term CDs, and money markets are sometimes called near money because they aren't as liquid, or rather they are illiquid, relative to check, uh, cash checking deposits and traveler's checks. M1, about $1.6 billion. M2, $8.4 uh, sorry, trillion. That's $8.4 thousand billion. That's the size of the current money supply. M3 used to be used. Um, M3 was large time deposits, was uh, some institutional money market funds included in there. It's not used anymore, so don't even worry about it. Let's review quickly key concepts. Money is not the same as wealth. Very important. Money is a component of wealth, but it's not the same thing as wealth. Money is essentially anything that you can exchange for goods and services. Wealth could be a house. Wealth could include stocks. Wealth could include land. A lot of things that aren't considered money. Second, all forms of money that are successful have to have, be able to serve uh, or have three roles. Medium of exchange, store of value, and a unit of account, as we discussed. Two aggregate measures of the money supply are, and I forgot to mention this, they're defined by the Fed, M1 and M2. So M1, the narrowest definition, currency or cash, traveler's checks and checking accounts. And then M2 adds those three, and then near monies, as we've discussed. All right, that's it. Have a great night, and I will talk to you tomorrow.